Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Davani. My very special guest is Max Kaidun from Hoddle Hoddle. Max, thanks so much for coming to my show. This is your second time, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me for a second time, I hope. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope uh, I'm not too often on your show, so people might <laughs> yeah, exactly. not, not, not getting tired from me. <laughs> okay. No, uh, I've been, I've been, um, I think I've, I've, we seen each other uh, last time in, on the Lightning Conference in Berlin. Yeah, in Berlin. Yeah. And the time before in Riga. It was a really amazing yeah. event you organized in Riga. And I also uh, watched uh, partially because I was, you know, going back and forth between interviews uh, in Berlin, but I saw some clips then afterwards of your panel discussion where you participated. So what I want to talk to you about is, uh, first of all, would you just for my new listeners, um, just a brief overview, what was the original intention, the need to create, creating, creating HODL HODL? Uh, what's, what's the path to HODL HODL? Yeah, so uh, HODL HODL is a peer-to-peer -peer exchange, but it's uh, on the contrary with the other like famous peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like local bitcoins, for example, or Paxful, we're a non-custodial peer-to-peer exchange. So um, we're somewhere in between BISC, which is software, but it's also non-custodial, and uh, local bitcoins, which is web-based, but it's custodial. So the need was uh, that... Um, well, first of all, it was my personal need because I I, uh, I was uh, using at some point some peer-to-peer -peer exchanges and I understood that uh, like user interface and the experience of user was was not so very good. Um, so, but, but the core idea was to create a non-custodial peer-to-peer exchange, pure non-custodial peer-to-peer exchange where exchange doesn't hold any funds. Exchange doesn't hold fiat, exchange doesn't hold crypto, in our case it's Bitcoin. So uh, due to this reason, uh, we are avoiding KYC ML because we're not money transmitter um, and we basically don't take money from person A and transfer Bitcoins to person B. Like for example, if you trade with, with local Bitcoins, you deposit Bitcoins within their own wallet and you trade within their own wallets. So basically, they're processing your funds from point A to point B. In our case, we understood at some point, it was, I think it was in 2015 with my partner, we understood that, uh, well, there's um, at some point they will be forced to do KYC ML because they're, 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 there's no difference between them and any centralized exchange because, you know, both of them are holding user funds within their, 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 their storages, both of, both of them are processing those funds. So we've created peer-to-peer -peer exchange named HODL HODL, uh, which is non-custodial, which is, uh, we're using Bitcoin multi-signature tech, and we've developed it. And um, well, the, the multi-signature tech was, was back then when, basically Bitcoin was created. So it's like open source, it's available, but we just took the core tech and created a proper UI UX around that. So people can easily use multi-signature solutions for their own goods and, and for their own needs, which is great. Exactly. And you mentioned, you know, these local Bitcoins, I mean, I also read on your, uh, or was it Hoddle Hoddle or your uh, Twitter handle, um, that you know uh, uh, funds were frozen because of some kind of tier or, or, or some kind of funding limits been reached uh, i mean how, yeah. how, how often does this happen uh, especially in countries i don't know like, i don't i don't i don't use uh, local bitcoins to be honestly so <laughs> <laughs> right uh, i saw that it wasn't us we we tried to actually we tried to avoid to like say some bad things about our competitors because we, we we truly believe that there should be some kind of business ethics and we also praise always local bitcoins because these guys created single-handedly they created the peer-to-peer -peer market which didn't exist before they like launched the exchange so local bitcoins was the first one and basically you need to like they, they had a huge impact on on bitcoin uh, on Bitcoin community, on, on Bitcoin sector, because like they create massive peer to peer markets globally, and people globally started to use Bitcoin, like in Venezuela or in other countries, 
they started to use Bitcoin uh, due to the fact that there was local Bitcoins. And like we, I think the whole Bitcoin community owned to, to local Bitcoins uh, anyway, even if they do the KYC ML stuff now, they did a great job before that and they continue to do a great job. So, um, but yeah, we, we saw some uh, like mentioning that if you don't verify yourself, they have some certain tiers on their own exchange. So if you don't verify, they just freeze your funds and wait until you do the proper verification process. So basically you cannot withdraw. Uh, at least these are like, uh, these are um, facts that presented by local bitcoins users so yeah i'm not using local bitcoin so i cannot verify this but i know that they've been sending emails uh with verification requests and i know that they've been freezing accounts because there's many 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 comments uh, in twitter and on reddit and another well they have their own rules and uh well if they if they uh, if they do a KYC ML, of course these rules will be stricter than on any other platform. Yeah, right. So I remember in Riga, uh, you first of all uh, there was sort of a huge announcement. Huddle Huddle would go open source. Yeah, right. we're 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 going to do uh, we're going open source. I think it will be twenty twenty because it takes time to prepare for everything. But uh, yeah, we want to become more transparent. We don't see any risks in that. We only see like positive things uh, because now like people can just look in our code and understand that uh, everything works properly. We do our part. We do like we ensure security and all that stuff, you know. Uh, but we had a second announcement actually as well, which which is uh, for us it's bigger bigger announcement than than open sourcing the exchange of course open sourcing exchange is, is still really cool but uh, we've announced that uh, we will release an api platform where we can put where we will put our smart contracts that we've built uh on the top of bitcoin uh th these ones that we use in hodl hodl which is two out of three multi signature smart contracts and another type that we use in our prediction markets, which are more flexible. Uh, also, we will put some lightning stuff that we've created because you can trade on HODL HODL through lightning channels as well. So we will put this um, under the APIs and we will create a smart contract, like basically generic escrow platform and um, what that does that mean is uh, basically everyone now in the world will be able to take this API from us uh, and create their own peer-to-peer -peer local uh, local Bitcoin exchange, which will be non-custodial. And you don't need to understand how to code Bitcoin. You can create a front end, you can link both parts, and then you go. You're, you, you have fully functional uh, local peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange, or you can, uh, sell real estate using the escrow platform or you can build basically there's a i've been speaking like last two years i've been traveling around uh on many conferences and i've been speaking uh on terms why we should be more um, um i don't i think why we should be more excited about bitcoin based smart contracts than any other smart contracts in the world because uh these things are simple they're working and uh, on top of that you can build any service you want freelancer platforms um like luxury good selling platforms you can use bitcoin for anything and bitcoin has this escrow mechanism which actually works and it's and it's basically uh the same as the escrow mechanism which works in any banking industry or in any like traditional conventional financial industry so like there's like tons of applications and tons of uh, use cases for this smart contracts that are built on Bitcoin. And that's why we are excited about that. 
Yeah, this is this is this is awesome. I mean, because this it would just facilitate and accelerate, you know, the decentralization process and the ecosystem which are built finally on on the Bitcoin yeah. uh, protocol. Uh, another thing that uh, I remember you uh, sort of I don't know was it an official announcement uh, even during the panel discussion in Berlin was as you mentioned uh, you can now switch. Let me just show for the for the viewers on on uh, YouTube. Um, on your uh, HODL HODL website. So this is the button, right? So where you can like yeah. switch from Lightning to Bitcoin. Yeah, you can, now you are like, blue is uh, on-chain mode for mm -hmm. trading and purple is uh, Lightning mode uh, for for uh, Lightning trades on HODL HODL. So HODL HODL is, uh, um, well, I think not the only one. There's there's another exchange uh, that that allows you peer to peer trades through the Lightning. Not only depositing an escrow uh, and 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 like releasing, depositing or receiving uh, funds from any centralized exchange through Lightning channel, but also trading through the Lightning channel. So we are basically one of the few exchanges in the world that actually allows that. So yeah, on Hodl Hodl you can trade uh, on chain. Uh, which is 2 out of 3 multi-signature using Bitcoin blockchain. And you can also switch this mode um, and uh, you can trade Lightning. But um, an interesting thing and also some insights for you and for your listeners and viewers that uh, we're currently working on redesigning HODL HODL and actually improving UI UX. And um, most probably the offer list with offers uh, both in in, in uh, on-chain contracts and lightning contracts will be the same so you don't need to switch anymore we will just put all the liquidity in one list and you will be able just to choose which one you want so basically there will be some tickers uh, uh, nearby the offer so you will be able to choose whether you want to trade through the lightning or you want to trade on-chain Right, and you mentioned in uh, during uh, the panel discussion in Berlin that it would uh, the lightning essentially uh, you know enhances or strengthens the the privacy issues, right, or the privacy yeah. features, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, because it's it's harder it's harder to track down uh, or to understand who who is uh, like owner of this transaction because they they bulk all the old transaction and just send it right away. Um, so the article that Hoddle Hoddle published on medium.com, it said uh, it was sort of a pre-announcement on November 6th and on November, on November 13th, which would be the, the day after tomorrow, sort of, um, uh, there would, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you invite, you know, Hoddle Hoddle invites, you know, uh, all the participants, pot potential participants to, to Hoddle Hoddle and uh, to the liquidity week. Um, yeah, you want to talk about a little bit about this liquidity week? Yeah, we're we're like uh, each each month we do uh, we do two 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 liquidity weeks. One is Lightning Week, where we discount uh, the fee for Lightning trades, and another one is just general liquidity week. Uh, we decrease our commission by fifty percent, and through the whole week you can just trade with a 50% discount on HODL HODL. Well, our commission actually is like twice lower than on local Bitcoins and Paxful. Uh, so we even make it, even from that, we, we make it even twice lower. So it's like four wow. times lower wow. at some point than, than, yeah, and than even, other 50 and, and Max, even cheaper, much, much cheaper than, let's just say, you know, the, 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 the standard the conventional, you know, KYC exchange. How much, I mean, I don't even know how much like Kraken, how much, how much fees do they charge? Compared now to, you know, to Hoddle Hoddle. I, mean, I don't know. Uh, I think the Kraken is uh, well. One of the lowest. During I would the liquidity, say, right? yeah. During the li the liquidity week, we we try to match all the conventional exchanges to their fees, but I think Kraken is still like they charge zero point twenty five or something like that. But one of our ideas, one of our goals, when we were uh, launching Hoddle Hoddle, that we dreamed about that at some point peer-to-peer -peer exchanges will be will cost you the same that uh, centralized exchange so there will be no difference at least in terms of uh, like how much you pay trading on hodl hodl and trading on like binance or or kraken or whatever you want uh, so we are like we're trying to do that but it, uh, i think uh, there's a still like a long way to go so 
Um, are there any countries which I'm curious about, are there any countries where, where there would be or is uh, actually a, a really urgent need, uh, you know, to trade or whatever, to buy and sell a Bitcoin, but where uh, people don't have maybe the, the technical means or maybe it's just, it just maybe even, I don't know, risky to do these kind of things? Because I, I seen the list of your countries uh, on, on that article, but, but Iran, for example, is not included. Why is that? No, we we do operate anywhere in the world except U.S. We don't work in U.S. Obviously, for reasons because you know we we don't want to play games with U.S. government, and um, and of course, like uh, U.S. market, we we have strong support from that market. We have a lot of like people who are supporting Hodo Hodo, and some of them are actually asking where where you when you will be presented on our market, but um yeah still like u.s citizens they have a lot of options to buy bitcoin like thousands of them they're, they're, like their financial system is quite uh quite like sophisticated so they, they have a lot of different options how to buy bitcoin uh, in u.s so uh, we're more focused uh, with holo holo on emerging markets we do believe that there's a need for bitcoin as a hedge from from like local governments or deflations or poor poor managed economies, um, and um, there's a need to to present uh, alternative how to buy and sell Bitcoin. So, for example, our top markets at the moment are um, Venezuela, Argentina, uh, Mexico, Mexico, and um, I think there was uh, Colombia. And uh, we also have Russia, which is uh, like biggest or one of the biggest markets for us. Uh, Central Asia and uh, funny, but we also have quite significant uh, like offer list from Australia. Uh, people in Australia are also using Hodo Hodo as well. But yeah, we believe that, uh, of course, Australia is not emerging markets. It's developed country, but uh, anywhere. Yeah, we, I, we believe, and I strongly believe, like during past three months, I think we saw that there's a demand in emerging markets, in those economies where people are like, they don't know what will happen with the local currency tomorrow. And um, it's like for Venezuela, for people in Venezuela, for example, Bitcoin has been like a vehicle for like for survival basically hedging your own risk from like huge deflation and we will continue focus on emerging markets to be honestly because like again in europe in 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 us uh, you have like a lot of different tools um people are more i think how to say uh people know what will happen tomorrow the everything is more conservative everything is more traditional you most of the countries in in europe uh they do understand how the future will like at least in in upcoming like few months how everything will evolve now as for emerging markets um any day is like <laughs> can be like uh something different you know government can can come out in the morning and say you know well you had like I don't know, 1,000 peso yesterday, and now, you, now these 1,000 peso is valued for 100 peso because you know, we decided that it, that is gonna be like this, and, and that's it, you cannot do anything, basically. So yeah, the, I think the peer-to-peer -peer market and peer-to-peer -peer exchange is a definitely tool for emerging markets, not for, well, people in conventional markets or like people in more de developed countries, they, they do like us as well, and they do use us, but uh, there's more volume in, in emerging markets, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, great, great news. So, um, uh, I mean, I'm a, you know, you mentioned UX, UI, uh, the user experience. I mean, if we can make it, you know, more accessible, really, in the on the average, uh, you know, uh, technical level, and um, so that would be like in any kind of applications. I mean, generally, the Bitcoin space, the you know, the the user experience, user interface, the the intuitive handling of how do I do things without having the need to understand, you know, uh, the the technical details or intricacies. 
Um, are there any like uh, challenges, problems you would see in, in this? I mean, when it comes to hot, I mean, is it liquidity? Is it like the main uh, challenge or what would it well, be? Well, peer to peer, like peer to peer exchanges, they're way more complicated than, than like standard uh, exchanges and, and standard markets because, um, well, you have this, uh, you're trading against another person which is always a risk of a scam is higher what, because on the centralized exchange, you're trading against the exchange. So basically there's, there's no like particular risk. If the exchange owners are not scammers, then there's no particular risk that you will be somehow, uh, I don't know, compromised or some, something bad will happen. Um, like, um, so peer to peer markets are, are way more difficult and there, there's different workflow and, uh, we constantly working on improving UI UX and sometimes UI UX is, is the key. Uh, like, you know, people are sometimes get lost with, with all the features that we have. So we try to improve that. And, um, but yeah, liquidity is a huge issue of course, because you know, on centralized exchange, you can just like borrow money from your investor or from, um, any other source you can put that money into liquidity in your like trading engine and there it says you know you you will be automatically trading uh, while on the peer-to-peer -peer markets you always need to like make a balance between sellers and buyers so there's at some point there's not so many sellers and there's not so many buyers so you need to it's like I would say the peer-to-peer -peer exchange are more about organic growth um like you just need to like uh, you need to have some patience some funds uh and you just need to have a great marketing strategy uh selling strategy and great product as well so yeah it's 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 way more complicated to be honest yeah yeah fair enough um uh, so max you talked also about channel capacity security um, uh, during the panel discussion, you, uh, do, you yeah. want to, do you want to talk about this? Uh, what you meant? Because I, I didn't understand it quite like channel capacity. Yeah, because uh, there, there's a limit uh, in trades in Lightning where, where during this panel on, uh, on the Lightning conference, there's a, there's a limit for trading. So you cannot trade large amounts on the Lightning for now. Uh, well, I believe it's good because, you know, it's still a very young technology and uh, like on HODL HODL people mostly trade 10, 20 bucks per trade. So the use case for a lightning is just perfect, you know, for like trading for a small amount. Um, but yeah, if at some point there will be increased channel capacity and increase uh, opportunity to trade larger volumes, then, then it will be good because you never know, maybe there are people who are willing to trade one, two, three BTC, for one trade and they wanted to, to do it through the lightning. Well, that, that's the next step I think for lightning to like improve this stuff and to allow people uh, securely transfer large amounts of Bitcoin. And uh, well, another thing, uh, the security, yeah, well, uh, lightning break, breaks sometimes, you know, it's not like, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say the security is bad, I would say that there's some bugs uh, in Lightning, uh, but people like Lightning team, uh, they're improving this, developers are working hard on that. So overall, my perception from, from the conference was that uh, like there's a lot of work and effort being put to the Lightning and it's really like motivate, this motivates us to, to build even more stuff on Lightning because we saw that there's a huge community uh, who is like really fascinated about lightning and they see the huge potential and we are happy that we, we've been among like few of the first exchanges presenting this opportunity to people uh, which is great so overall like we're happy with having lightning on our exchange and working on that protocol oh gotcha okay wonderful um um 
uh, going back to the to the to the list of the countries I want to talk to you about, uh, do you think? I mean, um, you know, uh, assessing you know what is uh, or, um, assessing you know the the analysis of of other experts geopolitically, macroeconomically. Um, you know, the recession might even come next year in Europe. There's, I think, uh, we we live really in crazy times right now. Do you think there's like uh, it's going to be a tipping point where there's going to be a you know it's about supply and demand, but uh, you think it's going to be in, in the tipping point where you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, growing number of countries, uh, not even in, you know, not necessarily in the developing countries, but also in the developed countries are going to like rush to whatever, you know, would it be custodial, non-custodial, uh, KYC, non-KYC, such as HODL, non-KYC? Yeah, but, well, uh, I, I think that, uh, yeah, any like economical pro problems they uh, people are try to hedge their risks their assets so um, I, I see that more and more people start to understand the thing that basically your fiat money is uh, uh worth less from each year like basically you need you know well like gold bitcoin you, you need to hedge you need to do something with your money because of just just having money on the account doesn't work anymore wasn't working any like at any time you know because it's like it's constantly you know you like 10 years 10 years ago you could use like 100 bucks for for like to buy some good stuff now now you cannot buy the same stuff for 100 bucks you need to think about it you know it's it's a simple logic you don't need to be like very economically wise to understand that your purchasing power is actually falling down. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that uh, even without any crisis or recessions or any stuff, I think people will generally come to uh, to to Bitcoin due to the fact that there's a like limited amount of Bitcoins will exist. There's like um, it's you're removing the middleman. Nobody will say what you can do with your Bitcoin, to whom you can send it or from whom you can receive. And nobody can came, of course, if, if you don't break on any corner that you have something uh, and confiscate it. Because you know, with bank account, it, like you can be shut down like this. It's easy, you know, because it's, it's one system, you know, it's like banks and governments, it's like, mostly it's the same already you know uh and the banks are not to blame because they are playing by the rules that is created by the governments and um so yeah it's it's kind of uh i think that like even if we won't see any recession or economical problems uh and honestly i hope we won't see them because you know many people will uh, like lose their jobs and all that stuff why you need to do that you know the more people have their jobs, the more econ economical development we are, the better it is for everyone, you know, even for Bitcoin. I, I wouldn't want to uh, Bitcoin succeed uh, due to the reason that there's a recession and people are losing their job and houses and whatever. I would love Bitcoin to succeed that people uh, came to idea and more and more people would recognize that it's a good asset or it's a good payment method or whatever and it's convenient and it's easy to use and uh, it's it, it has a huge potential so i would be like more into that that people just just start to understand that bitcoin is a thing and it has a huge value for, and it has a huge use case and value proposition and it's the money of 21st century uh, right. so I, w I would love to do that. I, I don't like people where, where, where people are like, some people are tweeting or posting the picture like recession is here to come. Many people will lose their job and finally Bitcoin will cost like 100,000 euros. Like why why you need to do that? You know, when there's recession, there's always a people who are suffering. Why you need to do that? So I would love to see more educated people coming, uh, like young people coming who are using mobile phones, who don't understand why you need to go to the bank banking branch and give your documents to some kind of guy to open an account, who understand though how to download the wallet to your to your phone and use it. 
So I would love to see that rather than any kind of recession or economical crisis. Yeah. No, Max, it's just uh, that we have to differentiate between, you know, the, the countries where, they're, where the people already feel the pain, you know, the yeah. existential, social, economical, uh, they, they feel it, they see it. I mean, you don't need much explanation, you know, but, uh, you know, people yeah. like wherever, wherever, here in Austria or in Europe, people are way too comfortable. I mean, they don't even understand yeah. really the serious implications what's what's coming, you know, not because we don't want chaos, you know, we don't want any any kind of, you know, suffering, pain, but maybe the, there is, you know, that's what I meant with the tipping point, you know, maybe yeah. people finally get it, you know, the, understanding the root causes of all the symptoms. Yeah. And then sort of preventively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Uh, yeah, I do understand point. But like if, if you would, if, if I would have an opportunity to choose, between two options like how people how bitcoin will go mainstream like uh through the recession or through the more knowledgeable people coming to the market i would choose second option because it's like way more better and it's way more organical to be honest because those people who educate themselves who did the research most probably they will stay within bitcoin those people who did it because of the need well, you don't know, maybe when the f they will create some kind of centralized uh, like fiat shitcoin, uh, stable coin, government stable coin, and they will say, okay, we now have this and recession is over. We should return back to like uh, government backed <laughs> stable coin or yeah. shitcoin, you know, like people who are educated, they, they most probably, they, as soon as you start researching Bitcoin, the implications, the reasons for that, um austrian economics and all that stuff you most probably there's no way back for you to to the fiat uh, town of fiat shit points you know you will understand the reasons behind you will understand the value proposition and potential of bitcoin like like and yeah there's need in other markets and maybe there, you need to have some kind of chaos for a short moment to understand but I would rather prefer uh, more educated people coming into the industry rather yeah. than people who are rushing because of the need. I totally agree with you. I'm totally on your page because I, w I always say, you know, instead of waiting or, or you know, I hope it's not going to happen, you know, but, but uh, I hope uh, my wish is that people really understand because of the un comprehension and education and understanding the potential of Bitcoin. Because in the you know yeah. in essence we we sh shall not forget it's about separation of money versus state government central banks so yeah. <laughs> this is actually our, our, the the whole aim of of Bitcoin and and you know making it first for the first time in human history the scarcest and hardest money ever created uh, so uh, Max uh, I don't have much any questions uh, left but uh, is there so, sort of a roadmap uh, for how how you want to you or you can talk about. Um. Yeah, well, we're going to release our API uh, in upcoming months, most probably in the end of 2019. We recently announced our partnerships with uh, like Blue Wallet, for example, that uh, now like people who are using Blue Wallet, they will be able to buy at some point, I think, in, in when we will finish our API and integrate. Uh, they will be able to buy and sell Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer, uh, through blue wallet uh, app on their phone so and we are going to announce a few more partnerships in upcoming months so the api for exchange is coming uh also the redesign as i mentioned improved ui ux is coming as well for how to huddle uh new language is coming it's like few new languages german language will be added to to huddle huddle i think in 2019 well uh open source uh 2020 somewhere some at some time in 2020 because it takes some time and we don't have that much uh coding power to say and uh, yeah and the escrow api platform is coming most probably uh, well first half of 2019 in 2020 so it's like we hope we will be able to release it uh, like february march but as with any kind of technical release you know you can hope for one thing and most probably will happen another thing because you develop we already have the the, the tech for that so we only need to uh create some like some some uh, other stuff which is a bit more easier 
And yeah, so end of 2019, the beginning of 2020 will be most probably a very interesting time for Holo Holo as well. Wow, very exciting, Max. <laughs> so are there any, um, any other information or resources now besides, you know, the Twitter handle of you, Hoddle Hoddle, the website, Hoddle Hoddle, any other, you know, uh, resources or materials or, I don't know, videos or uh, people can watch? For yeah, well, like we have a YouTube channel, which is like pretty big. It's like 1,800 people subscribed to this. And, uh, well, we have a Reddit and uh, like if you want to like the most active way of communication apart from the twitter is also telegram group we have like um i think the most active groups are now like general hodl hodl group which is obviously at hodl hodl in telegram we also have a russian uh telegram group for russian speaking community and we also have a huge spanish uh community in telegram and it's actually increasing. Active. They seem to be pretty active. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very active. <laughs> like uh, in, in the beginning of November, in the first November, we just, uh, we just make a post that uh, like, guys, we're available in Latin America for you in any case, if you have any problem. And since then, like, you know, our Telegram group, um, it grew from, uh, like it grew 10 times for like one, one and a half week, I think something like that. Uh, the the amount of offers increased on Hodo Hodo, and the trade amount is also increased. There's there's way more there's more liquidity now on Hodo Hodo than it was in October. So we see like increasing demand, and the the, the like uh, Spanish speaking community. Uh, these people are so amazing. Uh, they're very supportive, and like support from the from them was was really amazing. So yeah. Um, it's it's a huge group and it's increasing as well so yeah telegram twitter like youtube youtube for for guides and for a lot of stuff and um, yeah that's these are most probably the, the, like the ways we we also are available on facebook but it's like wow well, man it's facebook you know nothing interesting in there in terms of crypto all all crypto people are on twitter you know all roads lead to hard <laughs> I would say. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. No, this hopefully. is great. Fantastic. It was really educational, inspiring, and enlightening. Uh, and really, really, I mean, it's 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 very optimistic. I mean, I I'm, I'm I've never been optimistic in my life before, Max. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it comes to this point. No, it's really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So hope to see you soon. I don't know, maybe at the next event, hopefully maybe even in Vienna, because I think there's something coming up in spring, uh, a Bitcoin conference. So let's see, you know, if you have cool. the time, energy and whatever uh, the resources to come, uh, we'll, you know, uh, happy to see you, you know, face to face in person again. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, Max, thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, take good care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome to the podcast show by Kay Vandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Awesome Economics, The Hardest and Scarcest Money Ever Created in Human History, Bitcoin.